So here's tomorrow's adventure. That's it, that's the dome. Look at that, that bad boy. So it is 6.30, about 15 minutes into this thing. We haven't killed anybody yet. Yeah, don't walk backwards. That's where you're going. Hey, Regan and Mario. Still with us, they're hanging. I see them. Feeling as bad as hard as always. What would you like to tell someone who's interested in the trip? Or what more could you have done differently to prepare? I think what I could have done is actually prepared. I didn't prepare. I felt that my endurance, everything was fine. And I, once again, underestimated it. I think for me, the biggest thing I would have changed, the biggest mistake I made, is that I let my ego get in the way. This was my seventh time, so I just figured, hey, I'm just gonna show up and I'll be fine. I knew physically I'd be done in the first mile and that it was willpower from there. And I focused way too much on that aspect. So I didn't do as much training as I should have, because like, ah, I'm gonna make it. Like, there's no question, I'm gonna make it. And so I should have done a lot more. All right, we made it to the bridge, woohoo! 0.7 mark. Of course you got Vernal, not flowing too well, um, but still at least flowing. Anybody yet? Want a picture? What? Want a picture? Still Please. got everybody. So, uh, welcome to Bruno. So, I would tell anyone that's interested in the trip to watch a thousand hours of YouTube clips <laughs> and review what others have done and learn from that and maybe even mirror some some of the tips that they give you that helped me because I the last time I was in Yosemite was about 20 years ago and I couldn't really remember much of any trail at all so watching the YouTube clips I kind of knew what to expect when it came to what the trail and the terrain looked like so um, that helped and the tips that you learn on YouTube from the people that actually took the journey was a significant factor in my physical condition. I did not run out of water until um, we got right before the shuttle stop and so I was really proud of myself and also I prepared physically by uh, doing incline hikes um, on the treadmill. And then also, this was my third hike ever, my third official hike, this half dome hike. So I did go out a couple of times before, did Mount Talak. That was my first official hike. And you need to look that up. And you'll see why I'm smiling right now because I did accomplish that. And then I did another hike Mount Diablo and that was like check-in hike so I definitely prepare a thousand percent physically and mentally and even when you do that when you're living the experience you'll still have some room to grow outside of what you prepared and but you'll be ahead of the game. Tips to tell someone would be to understand that you will be pushed out of your comfort zone and to accept that. Other than that, if you are a little apprehensive, but you still want to do it, I would recommend not watching too many YouTube videos online. <laughs> um, because you know, you know you're going to be in for a challenge. So my, my thoughts were, what's the point in looking into it too deeply? Because I, I knew I was going to do it, so I didn't want to um, overlook, overlook things or overanalyze the situation. Other tips would be to prepare. Mentally, I don't know what you could really do to prepare for it mentally, except otherwise accept the fact that
that you're going to be a little uncomfortable, like I said. But physically, you know, try to do some cardio. I just, I normally go to the gym anyway, so I run about three quarters of a mile, a mile three times a week. Nothing much, but it's just enough to where I wasn't winded going up the hill as long as I took my time. Um, I should have done squats or more leg works out, workouts, which I didn't. But another important tip is to take your time going up the mountain. Don't push yourself because you have to conserve your energy. Think of it as a marathon, not a sprint. Usually when I go camping, I make a list of things that I'm going to take. Since I didn't know exactly what was involved in the hike, I didn't take everything that I needed to take. So I would say to sit with Dave and find out exactly what you need and take whatever he says to take and don't take whatever he says not to take, <laughs> number one. Number two, maybe look at some of the videos on YouTube and see what those people say and then you can prepare. Number three, if you're not physically able, don't go. But if you have hiked before, then I would say if you're in a gym, then go to the gym a little more, exercise a little more. If you're a hiker, go on a 10, 15 mile hike a couple of weekends before. Go on a hike up another hill to prepare. And uh, when you're there, just be prepared to have a great workout, be able to see some great things, and to be with a great group of people. So I would say just prepare, be prepared for a, an experience that you can remember for the rest of your life. So of course we got Vernal just doing her thing. Percy Bernal. And you can hear the water slamming against the rocks. tell someone is definitely do it um, don't be afraid that you're not in shape enough you're not able to do it just try your hardest and take a little bit of time take lots of water um, but then just uh, have faith in yourself so and dig deep <laughs> so we are on the stairs uh, still below Vernal Falls getting pretty close I want to give you a shot the uh, joy of stairs and once you get to climb. But yeah, it's 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 pretty steep. There's Mario and Regan still kicking butt. the uh, bridge below Nevada Falls. We are right about an hour and a half in. But we're, uh, we're all still here. Mario's coming over the ridge. Regan should be right behind him. There he is. Swine. Nevada Falls, looking a little light. Swine. Still magnificent.
Oh, we still got we still got, we still got the whole band together. Here goes Regan. Get Archie back there. The effort to pack everything and prepare and the drive. And then when we got there, getting up really early for the hike up to the dome. And then doing the, the hike going up and back was definitely worth it. All the work to prepare. And then, you know, we, I normally get up early, so it wasn't that big of a deal. Well, but why was it worth it? <clears throat> for the satisfaction for the ability to go there with a group of guys to do a hike that I had done in the past but I didn't start from the valley floor and to have that experience of walking. I walked about probably pretty close to 11 miles. I didn't do the whole 14 miles. And uh, just being able to experience that and have it in my mind what I need to do next time. The experience and the satisfaction. So how far did you make it, Regan? Uh, Yosemite, no, what the hell Nevada. falls is this? Nevada, Nevada Falls. Falls. Regan has made it to Nevada Yay. Falls. Woo! As proof, <laughs> there's the Nevada Falls restroom. That is, that is our proof that he made it to Nevada Falls. Yeah. So we have finally made it to your first view of the cables. Um, you have them sub down right in front, so we'll do the stairs and crawl of sub down. And of course, the white line right there in the mountain behind, maybe one or two people on it, is the cables. So we'll be doing that. We all made it. Uh, we left Regan at Nevada Falls. Uh, Mario, I think, is maybe a minute or two behind. Archie's using his long legs to absolutely destroy us. <laughs> but the uh, the rest of us are hanging out. Finally made it to Subdome. Right here. Right here. Wait. So there's your there's your cables. Pictures and video, of course, do not do it justice on any level. I don't actually have any real ones. Oh, it's a little busy today. Um, looks old school. She got about 50 people on the cables right now. When you're thinking about doing this, I'm deathly, deathly, deathly afraid of heights. And I had to talk myself into even applying for the lottery. But once I did that, the all that I did to prepare for Half Dome got me to the bottom of Half Dome. And then when I saw Half Dome, in uh, I had an experience where I climbed a quarter of the way up and there were a lot of people in the cables, which meant a slow walk up. So when I was standing on a plank and my gear, my safety gear that I wore up and down and did not use was loose and I panicked. So I was the last one of our um, group of eight climbing up the cable and a net was in front of me. And I told her, I can't do this. I can't do this. And I walked down. Then everybody, I watched everybody go up to the top. And I was standing there at the bottom for about 10 minutes thinking, I am going to be the only one out of this group that did not accomplish this goal. And then when they come down and when we travel eight miles back to camp, they're going to be bonding and talking about their experience and I'm going to be left out. And then when we go to dinner, because I was thinking about the pizza that early, I would not be able to bond and share the experiences. So I sucked it up, saw this guy named Critter in front of me. I didn't know his name was Critter until he <laughs> halfway up the, the uh, dome and just s sucked it up and, and made it to the top. I did cut myself. I think I was the only one that bled that whole day <laughs> and ended up with a Band-Aid at the top. So anybody can do whatever they set out to do. It just may take a couple times. Don't think about your limitations. Just do it is my tip.
Okay, we are at the base of my beauties. There's Mark. It's me. Ar Archie's gonna. Archie's starting us off. Ready. Don't think I'm gonna give you any video on the cables. Sorry, I feel like living. Yeah, fair. Strap it to your forehead. Was the effort worth it? Of course it was. The effort going up, the nervous energy got us up there, and, but we still had to come back down. So I think that's something that I ended up forgetting. And it's not like going to the gym and you're able to get off a treadmill whenever you want to. You still had to make it down. Nobody was going to come up and get you. Um, it was really fun to get to know people outside of work on a different level, a little more informal. So I got to know things about people I didn't know just from work. Um, the effort was also worth it because the physical challenge was really difficult because we were walking up, up a mountain for eight and a half miles and down the mountain for eight and a half miles. Other than that, the, the mental was more challenging than the physical. Absolutely. The mental part came into play for me personally on Half Dome. Sub Dome wasn't so bad, but mainly Half Dome because of the challenge. You really had to focus on one thing at a time. That's what helped me get through the cables. So in other words, one section at a time. Instead of looking at everything together, um, just doing it gradually. Other than that, the views were absolutely incredible. I liked the 360 degree view of the valley. We were also lucky enough to have a helicopter fly over us, so that was, that was cool. Uh, but also the next morning looking up at the mountain, thinking and talking to you and Archie and Mario, wow, we actually hiked to the top of that mountain. So the views at the top were spectacular and better, but looking up at it the next day was, was really cool too. Effort was definitely worth it. Um, I remember as I was going up the hill, um, the actual cables, the part I kept telling myself was just make it to the next plank. Just that's your goal, make it to the next plank one little bit at a time. And so it was definitely worth it, especially once you got to the top. And then once I realized as I was going up that once I got to the top, I was going to have to come back down. And that kind of scared me a little bit, but then um, realizing that I could do it was definitely worth it. So we're all exhausted, but we made it. So my seventh time standing atop the dome. It just means you're body's And no, I'm not addicted, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, our crew made it to the top. <laughs> Tony thought about it, but then decided she couldn't miss it. Hey. So she uh, she made it. Have you ever been on the diving board? So of course right here you got a L cap on the right. And you can see the three sisters on the left. As you work your way down, uh, you can actually see a little bit of the valley. Uh, you can see that meadow down there, you can see how high we've we've come. So yeah, there is a good 300 yards plus uh, of space up here. So yeah, most people, most people head up this way. So what time did we get up here? What time did, what was it? 30? Absolutely. 
it was an out of body experience. So the effort I cannot measure in words, but the effort before, during, and after this experience was definitely worth it. And I cannot describe to the viewer what that actually means. You have to live it. The effort is always worth it. Each year you go, it gets harder, but it's still just as much fun. And for me, seeing everyone on top, uh, that, that is always what makes it worth it to me. This is my seventh time, so no, just getting to the top doesn't make it worth it. Because I've seen it. But seeing other people make it, like I said before, seeing, seeing Tony crest that hill after she'd been defeated, that was amazing. I mean, that was, that was absolutely amazing. And just being there with everybody on top, um, sharing that sense of accomplishment, that was, that was the best. I remember after getting to the top, I had to tell myself to relax and enjoy the view and my accomplishments because it took a good 20, probably a good 20 minutes before I was able to kind of enjoy everything as I couldn't help but think you have to go back down. And maybe part of that too was I was so physically exhausted. I had to rest a little bit, um, eat some snacks, take off my shoes, relax. And then once I got comfortable physically with, you know, taking my shoes off and eating, then mentally I was able to unwind and relax a little bit more. What did it feel like to finally get on top? Like, what, what was that feeling for you? Um, I think it was, I'm here and I can't believe I'm here. Like, I'm, I, it was just, um, especially looking out over the hill um, on the other side and seeing how high up we were and just, it was a feeling like, um, I don't know, it's hard to describe until you do it. It's like having children and until you've actually had children. You don't know what it's, it feels like, and then you have them, you're like, oh, this is what it's like. So I guess that was just that moment of just gratitude and pride and faith and all of those things mixed together. One last shot of the dome. Uh, at least from this point of point, we survived. We were rock salad. Yeah. Went up a third of the way, <laughs> then chickened out. But you overcame it. Yep. Yeah, I made it. You have like, you know when it went to the stairs for the last part? Oh, yeah. That was crazy. That's what my friend tried. How did it feel when you finally, when you overcame everything and did make it to the top? When you, when you crested those cables and actually on top of the dome, how did it feel when you made it? So. It didn't sink in right away when I made it to the top. I remember I had the biggest smile on my face, but my body did not feel anything. My, it was an out of body experience. So I sat there for a second and uh, just, I think my mind was just blank. But then when I saw my friends, I saw you and everybody else, it made it all worth it. And I couldn't move though. I don't know if you noticed when I was at top, uh, the oh tip. If you can get to the diving board, do it and take a photo with the diving board, either next to you or you're on top of it. Cause that's the one thing, that's another tip, do it. Uh, but. Being up there, I really just smiled the whole time. And then coming down was the easiest part of the journey for me, coming down, climbing down half down. I think because there were less people at the, and then Dave, you were coaching me down the whole time, which really helped, I appreciate that. And um, at the bottom of half down when I was done, I think I just smiled the whole time. I really, I wanted to cry. I remember that part of, um, I think after Subdome, in maybe three miles back, I thought I need a good, like, cry. And I haven't done that yet. And I think I'm gonna do it. it just hasn't sunk in yet. So, um, 
But now, even from Saturday when I woke up the next day after Half Dome, I have been in situations, simple situations, where before Half Dome, I would not have had the, I don't know if it's the willpower or just the perseverance or whatever it is. Um, before I had Half Dome to after climbing Half Dome, now whatever, a fear, when a fear comes up or if I don't want to do something, all I think about is that darn rock and the hanging onto the cables and saying I need to make it to that next plank. So now I look at everything as the next plank, getting to the next plank. So that's how I feel. So it is now just after five o'clock. We've made it to Nevada Falls. So Nevada Falls, on the way down John Muir. We stop for a second. So we went we went higher than that. Not on that mountain, but we went higher. That might be subdome right there. Might be. About the trip? I think what I'll remember most is um, at the point where I realized I was going to make it right near the very top and then but I think above that was when the helicopter did the flyby because that was really cool and it was sort of like you had gone through this and then you had this additional little element at the end that was even more rewarding and I was really happy when I heard that Tony made it up the mountain. <laughs> so those were the things I'd remember, but um, yeah, I think that that was real special. That's a hard question to answer because there are so many things I will remember. I think um, just the bonding of the group, the views, how difficult the, the hike was. I think that the mind doesn't remember how difficult things were and this is my third time and I kind of question why I did this again but I would probably end up doing it again. I loved it. How beautiful the park was and how easy it was to get around. They had the trams, I've never taken the tram with the shuttles before and uh, having fun with the guys being able to go up with a group of guys that can really hike, and then the satisfaction of the hike. I will definitely remember the Half Dome hike the most, and the views at the top, but mainly, it was a lot of hard work, but because of that, it was very re uh, rewarding. So the hard work, but how rewarding it was, and also um, pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone is always fun because it builds um, a lot of confidence and a sense of satisfaction. Um, so it's very re uh, rewarding. 
I think there's a lot of things to remember about the trip, but most importantly for me was the overcoming of stuff. I think everyone overcame what they thought they could do, uh, especially Tony. I, I think she was the biggest story. She got defeated by the cables uh, originally, and then she was on top. I, I think that is the that is the greatest story uh, of overcoming. So I think that's what I'll remember most. I will remember most about the trip when we got in the van. <laughs> that's when the trip started. And took the journey at night. So I couldn't really see much. But then when I woke up the next morning, I realized how beautiful Yosemite is and how majestic it is. And I asked myself, could I wake up to this every morning? I still don't know that answer. But um, also I remember the bonding the group did and how it felt like we were friends forever and just how smoothly everything went without, I'm a planner so that day I didn't know what was gonna happen. I kind of had a vision in my head but um, not know, not knowing what was not what was it going to happen. It went great, and so it's just the whole day was complete from start to finish. Got it. So it is like 1:30 on a Thursday. We are Bridewell Falls, and the parking lot is empty. You will hardly ever see this, so enjoy. All right, so we're finally to use somebody. Uh, August 2018 is this version, and of course we're starting at Bridal Veil. So I'm here with Mario and Mark. Mario and Mark both wave. Mario wave. Woo! All right. So and tomorrow is the dome. Just how we start with Bridal Veil. Hey, so we're now at Tunnel View. Uh, still can see a little bit of smoke from the Ferguson fire. Uh, you can see Bridal Veil, vale, of course, off to your right. Right there. Um, and of course, right behind it is the Three Sisters. Half Dome, tomorrow's fun, of course, is uh, off in the distance. And El Cap is right there on the left. So. So this is uh, late August, high heat. You could do that. Yosemite Falls. Uh, and I, I've seen people build igloos. As you can tell, but there's here, some, they have the snow piled up. but really not much they, at all. Through, you make it so you can walk through. Oh, okay. But the best part, there's hardly anybody here. It's like a ghost town. It's awesome. All right, here you go, guys. Yosemite Falls. Oh wait, there's no falling, because there's like no water.